All right, welcome back, inebriates. Um, I don't get to do too many live interviews anymore uh, with, with with Zoom and just the number of people we're getting from all over the world. I think I was talking to someone in Toronto the other day and then L.A., and it's crazy. Uh, but we're actually sitting in real life with Paul Kelly. Welcome to the show, author. Oh, oh, thank you, thank you. Um, and, and professional figure drawer? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I don't know about that. Um, um, you've attended our figure drawing events many a time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was, like we are talking just before the show, I had no idea you were a writer yeah. at all. <laughs> um, so – how did you get started? Like, you got a new book? Well, it's yeah, like, the uh, the new the new smidgens? one is Smidgens. Okay. Basically, it's it's um, creatures that live in the base of trees. Uh, when humans see them, uh, they kind of turn into squirrels. Okay. That's why you see so many squirrels around. You don't know if they're Smidgens or not. Um, in addition to that, they generally, when they have some type of victorious, they're kind of like trolls, I guess, okay. if you want to call them. Um, that when they have a victorious mission, if yep. you want to call it, um, they will do kind of a pigeon dance. So it's a combination of, of the smidgen and the, and the pigeon. Um, it originated really years and years ago. This particular one uh, was years and years ago with uh, Cub Scouts. Uh, we were at a camp and... Um, all the kids were bored, and one of the things that I generally did was uh, make up stories, things along that line. And I was trying to convince them at the time that they were little creatures that were living in the base of trees, and yeah. that they had a whole civilization and things along that line. And it kept sticking one way or another. And a few years ago, I had gone through and done a book, and luckily it won some awards and th some other things. Um, but it was called Dream Butterflies, which was more for my daughter and more for young ladies or people that uh, um, uh, favor that type of story. Mm -hmm. And it was more of a fairy tale type of thing. But a lot of it really came down to that when they were kids, I ran out of books um, with them. And... Um, after a certain uh, while, I would make up stories. Yeah. So all of a sudden you say, once upon a time there was a, and wait for them to fill in the blank. And my goal was to make a story, but also end it with some type of moral or something along that line. Yeah, so yeah. it got a little peculiar on that end. So this was one that all of a sudden I had realized that the boys, um, and it, I, it's really young young people's Yeah. Um, adventures, but it happens to be two brothers, two younger brothers, um, which are two of my sons. And it's, it's bits and pieces were taken from real life in the sense of uh, lying in a field, um, watching shooting stars and things like that, and trying to explain some of those things mm -hmm. um, and tie them back to them. The cover was actually uh, uh, illustrated by one of my former scouts who was, um, he, he's doing programming and all kinds of other things now, but um, back then he was there and he was a strong lover of squirrels. Yeah. So I had to incorporate <laughs> at the time some of that. So I, so it, it's not only been the book, which has just come out right before Christmas, um, and it's on Amazon and it's on Barnes & Noble and down in uh, Stillwater Books, down in um, Pawtucket. Um, it's it's all over the place. And then in addition to that, um, I know a um, RPG uh, role-playing game um, developer. Who's been on the show. <laughs> that's been on, that's been on as, as everybody yeah. in, important until now. Um, but he, he actually, and this is my only, unfortunately, my only copy that oh, I have of it. But he's he did a um, basically a, a tabletop RPG that you can get through drive through, and some of the other places that you can get them. And I worked with him to incorporate that it was still true with the story. Yeah. But it also gave people a little bit more uh, room to play, if yeah. you want to call it that type of thing. So it it yeah. And role playing games are so hot right now. Yes, I mean it, it's and there's a lot of changes going on, um, especially in discussions with him and other people, um, in the whole 
uh, industry uh, with wizards and a bunch of others that uh, are that are doing yeah, different controversies. Yes and no. It's, I, it's, <laughs> it's actually that's been resolved. They buckled. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it, for any listeners who don't know, yes. uh, Wizards of the Coast is the company that puts out Dungeons and Dragons, and they've always had this long-standing. Um, uh, what was it? they call it? Uh, open source gaming license or something yep. along those lines. And it basically allows any creator to create something as a companion for their existing game. Um, and so they're coming out with a new version of D&D, which they do every decade or so. And they decided that they were not going to allow that anymore, which, I mean, there are some, some legitimately big businesses that exist yep. on the back of this. Yep. And um, so it became a big thing, and the fans were up in arms. Like, people, were, there's a movie coming out. People were talking about boycotting the movie, which is like not really connected to Wizards yep. of the Coast, but it's, you know, so it's a big thing. But I have nothing to do with Wizards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just so you know. But uh, they, yeah, they, they just backed down, um, I think, like last week, and they just decided that, you know. It, oh, I it, didn't know the latest. Yeah, it wasn't good business to, to, to push what they were going for, and. And uh, it, it um, and there's been people who said they can't really, they couldn't have really enforced it anyways because you can't you can copyright like the terms you know for your characters and your lands yep. and castles and whatnot, but you couldn't copyright the game mechanics, and so that's really what was the open source. Yep. So. And a lot of this, I mean, the, the, so this this kind of takes different tentacles, mm -hmm. if you want to call it. The book itself is really, I, I guess it's targeted towards 8 to 12-year-old boys or people that understand, you know, I mean, I don't know, Hardy Boys or whatever yeah. back in the day. Um, More adventurous. People. Yeah, it's, yeah. It, but it's also one that it's not insulting. It's not a... Um, um, not to be disparaging to Teletubbies, but people, it's not it's not in that ilk. It's it's there's there's some meat, a little bit of meat to it, but it's also um, I tried to have. I found that there was a I, I've done some things with some public libraries around and some different things, and I found out from them that there's really a, a void when it comes to younger people that are just really starting to read fanatically. Mm -hmm. And that's where it really came down to the young readers. Um, the first book is a, is a little bit younger. Um, this one here, it's, it's, it's digestible. It's still, you know, in an adult language and things along that line, but it's still very digestible. And it's also, if you want to do, have a little bit of fun, that's yeah. that's kind of what it's really kind of built on, if you want to call it. So it's it sounds like you really take uh, inspiration from your real life, and then like, yeah, this stories. this pieces of it, um, and it's probably some that either myself or the person that was with me, they would kind of gather. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that the the reality is is more general. It's more it's more for everyone to be able to partake in it and say i have something like that or i've always wondered about this or things along that line and in hearing various people talk about you know invisible friends when they were younger or things along that line this is a way to be able to empower some of those this particular story is is you know one of the things that it's the smidgens and and the um younger brothers that that are um empowered to go against some bullies that are around so there's there's some general sense in it and yeah. i think and i think as we all know growing up that we all have that sense of we're odd and we're not part of the group um sure yeah. and this this is one that if you join with friends and if you you know you you can make it through a lot of that one way or another oh that's cool so. um so it they r remind me Sounding wise of puckwudgies, there is there so is. is there like a little I have I've done a lot of um, through scouts, yeah. uh, cub scouts as well as boy scouts and things along that line. I've done a lot of camping in this area, uh, so I'm I'm aware of 
punk wedgies. I'm also aware of trolls. I'm also aware of... So this is, I guess it kind of takes a little bit from all of those. It's yeah. not necessarily um, as serious, mm -hmm. if you want to call it, as the punk wedgie and uh, that area. One of the things that I keep coming back to is, is uh, one of the phrases that people keep coming back to is believe you know that if you believe it it's kind of like bigfoot or or puck or, mm -hmm. that are in the uh, uh bridgewater triangle things along that line that if you believe then somehow certain things come true um and hopefully there's alliances that can be made and things along that line so yeah there's this it's similar in some of some of those ways yeah uh, can you tell us a little more about the previous one you were doing? Was, um... The other one was Dream Butterflies, and Dream Butterflies is is more. It's truly a, a what's considered a fairy tale in the sense of once upon a time there was a, and then it starts off, and it's and what I tried to do with that particular one was that um, I was finding that a lot of the books and the information that were out there were a lot were a step ahead of where a lot of the people were, especially the younger people, that it was about falling in love with some guy someplace or mm -hmm. something along that line. And this is really about her and her friend and the adventures that they have and the lessons that they kind of learn. And some of it came down to that um, there's these dream butterflies that, that for the most part, when they land on you when they sleep, they actually take a little bit of your dreams and share it with other people. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. yeah, so that's that's kind of the basis of it, and then from her being a very secluded princess, that she has friends and goes through some of the internal turmoil of of should I share this or should I just take other people's dreams and keep them for myself type of thing. So oh, it's it's um, it is one that can be referred back to. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just one that, again, a lot of the things came from different bits and pieces of stories that I've had in the past that uh, people kept saying, you ought to write this down. And eventually I ended up doing that as, as well as some other stuff. But the, the book, the RPG, there's some yeah. other things that are in the works as well. But it's, and, I, and for the author, especially for... Um, the younger series, it's it's generally P. M. Kelly, which is basically nighttime or evening oh, okay, yeah, kind of uh, stories kind of you can go to sleep. Oh, so yeah, so it's kind sense. of so yeah. it's it's along that line. So yeah. and and also as a way to differentiate myself um, back years in many centuries ago uh, when I was younger, um, the um, uh, I had done a lot of. Uh, uh, either radio or, or music things and things along that line. And they tended to label me that because I was, I was generally up at night. Yeah. Um, so, Oh, that's funny. So yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's digestible. It's available. It, it's one of those that, and if, if anyone has, there are, uh, there is a website for the dream butterflies now, but there's, there's probably going to be one that encapsulates more of this, mm -hmm. but, you know, I mean, and, and if you need, if if anybody needs anything, either autographed or otherwise, just contact me and let me know, yeah. whether it's through you or, or otherwise. Um, I really like how it kind of came from, you know, uh, with, you know, uh, stories from like kind of collaborative with your kids, you know, and it makes me yeah. think back when my youngest was little, uh, they used to love to color. Yeah. And instead of me getting a coloring book i would be like well what do you want to color and they'd be like a dog or a bunny rabbit or whatever so i would draw it and you know do it over in sharpie and then they would color that yep and um we, they would frequently sit there and critique my work as i was doing it um, <laughs> which, which is always fun a little frustrating but you know um but it really kind of you know involved them and they saw the process and and uh, you know they're 18 now and, and yep. they're selling commission work uh, through tiktok and so it are your kids there is, like kind of in the same there is some there's there's one that's in music and one that's in uh, um 
works with animals, chimpanzees and, and the like. Another one with uh, computers. You brought a book and not a chimpanzee? Yeah, fly, I, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Can't bring a chimpanzee. There's, it's to all to educational and things. Like, yeah, yeah. Just just bringing you to the beer store yeah. could be a problem. They, um, but yeah, they they all. I would think that they all have something that they got out of it, yeah. one way or another. Um, uh, my daughter is doing the uh, uh, digital magazines and things along that line, and doing a lot of photography as well as writing and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it it really. Like I said, originally, it, and it's tougher than it seems. Um, that's where a lot of people all of a sudden they say, oh, I'd like to do that. And then they try, mm -hmm. and then there's lots of silence, and the kids get frustrated, and it kind of goes away, and here's another book. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's, but, <laughs> that's one of the things that I find about any creative effort is those of us that have been doing whatever that particular creative yep. thing is for a long time, inadvertently make it look easy yeah you know and people will be like well i can't do it and be like i mean i didn't just sit down one day and i yes. could draw like it took a long time if you go back and listen to our podcasts early on they're not awesome <laughs> yes they are oh they're not all oh, this um you know and it's it's you you get better and you have to you, i was telling someone like you have to be okay with sucking yes you know and just be like it's gonna be bad and the next one would be a little better. The there was be a little better. There was an old story, and sorry to wax prophetic here. Oh no, that's, that's but, what we do. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one that um, um, it was a few weeks before Christmas, and a kid, a young kid, that was going through and kept running down the stairs saying, "Is it Christmas yet?" And the parents kept saying, "Well, no, it's not. It's not Christmas yet. It's in two weeks or whatever it is." And they had gone through, and they, he came running down on. That particular saying he because it's I'm putting myself in that yeah and then, but he had gone through and came rushing down the stairs and they said well it's out in the barn I said okay out in the barn so he's trying to figure out on the way to the barn what could it be this might it might be an elephant it might be it could be anything one yeah. way or another and flings the door open and then there's a huge pile of manure and all of a sudden oh yeah there it is that's it's nothing but manure <laughs> that's what i figured okay and the parents figured okay at least he's gone he's yeah. at least out of the house and then all of a sudden the parents come out and figured they'd console him and all of a sudden he dives face first into it and is flinging the manure all over the place and they looked at him and they said what are you doing and he said well with all this manure there must be a pony in here somewhere <laughs> and that's that's a lot of this process it really you do there is experience yeah. that each time you do it, but there's also you have to be able to go through like for these that all of a sudden you, you have an editor, somebody that says no, that's not the right thing. Yeah, yeah. Go well, that's what I wrote. Yeah, that's not the right thing, and you have to <laughs> battle your ego and battle the other, and also not lose the true mission that you have in the story, um, and look for the pony. You know, it's always. You're always saying, okay, as long as that's there, whether I use uh, with or with for, okay. It's, yeah. that's, it, it's not affecting that part, but it all kind of comes together. So that, That's a, a, great, a great way of um, putting it because it, there's so many times where I've been working on a drawing where I'm like, I don't yeah. like it, and I just keep working on it, and then eventually it comes around. You know? And what's amazing to me on that is just like even this this was one of those that it was kind of my anti-ego that i would tell those stories and then people would say you have to make sure you write it and internally i'm saying no why would anyone want to know my stories <laughs> you know there was an internal edit yeah and it's like you know what i'm just going to put it out into the world and we'll see what happens and i'm amazed when uh when the dream butterflies one came around i was in a um library and sitting down in a children's room uh yes i was and i was i was sitting there and there was a couple young ladies and they're arguing about what happened in my book yeah they had no clue who i was uh, they just knew that i was helping out and all of a sudden one turned to me and all of a sudden it's like what, what do you think about it and i said well i'm kind of a little close to it because yeah. i i i know the intent 
but it's what you think that you want out of it. And come to find out that all of a sudden they said, well, what do you, what do you mean by that? Because they realized I was skirting around right, yeah. reality here. And all of a sudden they said, well, you know, I wrote it, so therefore they said, no, you, no, no. <laughs> I said, yes, I did. And we had this kind of back and forth. And no, no, because it's somebody that's my age that did this. And I said, good, that's a, that's a compliment. That's, yeah. that's good. And they had a whole different spin on it that – I, you know, I mean, it was a good one, Yeah. but it was one of those that I, I never, for myself, I got something out of it. I, with my kids, I mean, the first, the first book, uh, the art that's on the front is uh, my wife, who you, you kind of, we've been to a lot of the uh, model drawing and other festivities that you have. And uh, she did the artwork for that. And this one here, like I said, I try to make it so the artwork also means something to the narrative going into it. Mm -hmm. Like this one here was, it's Zach who, um, like I said, is now, um, he, he was an Eagle Scout and he was, but it, back then it was, you know, a wannabe Cub Scout, you know, and, and still had these wide open questions of why does this happen? Why do these, and whether you mention Pukwudgies or, or Bigfoot or Smidgens or, now all of a sudden, oh, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. And to them, realizing that that's how they're digesting it. Yeah, you know, um, I always hear people talk about, like, you know, the terrible twos or terrible threes, and, and they're always like, oh, the kids are always like, why, why? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, because they don't know. <laughs> like, they're trying to understand the world around them, and I get it, it's yep. frustrating. Yep. But it, it, it's, you know, I feel like a lot of – a lot of being a parent is kind of explaining what you know, realizing what you don't know, and being like, I don't know, let's, especially now, you can be like, I don't know, let's look that up on, yeah. on the internet. And, 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 but giving them kind of the baseline and letting them kind of put the pieces together. That's what, that's what I learned even on the making up stories originally and things along that line, even besides the bed that running, like I said, running out of books, that it was a matter of that at first they would put something in that I they thought I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, they realized, ooh, the light bulb went off, and now they want to challenge me. Oh, so, so then they start so, trying to make it hard? So now yeah. it, it's, oh, well, it's a troll with one eye who has a limp, and you go, what the heck? <laughs> and you're like, and right, you go, okay. Hang on, hang okay, on, I got okay, it. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> And then in, there are times, and there has been, yeah. um, that all of a sudden, you know, that you had a long day, and all of a sudden you're going through, and then they're saying, wait a minute, that's a lot like a story we had two weeks ago. <laughs> Am I supposed to make it brand new every – but to them, that's how invested that they were. Yeah. And, and by involving them rather than just, okay, I'm going to tell you a story and you go to sleep – you realize that in their mind, they're still trying to answer these questions. And that's what this is a lot about friendship. And, and the, I guess the first one is too, um, the dream butterflies that, um, you know, friendship and pulling in, pulling together can really be an empowering type of thing. I've seen some of these, when I talk about Cub Scouts, it's not necessarily even the organization, but it was the vehicle that some of these kids got together mm -hmm. and some of them are still best of friends. Yeah. They'll still by zoom or otherwise be doing uh, D and D or doing anything along that line. So it, it's, it's great to see that grow from that. Yeah. Um, but they grow together so they can explain in each other's vernacular. Oh yeah. You end up with like a real, like <laughs> yeah, shorthand where right. you just be like, you know that thing in the place, the time that we did that thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 I got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And that's, and the same, and all of a sudden, you know, that's not the rule. And it's like, okay, I don't know what we're playing, <laughs> what we're doing, but, but yeah, so that's, so like I said, going through the process was humbling. Yeah. If you want to call it, because the first phase is, okay, I think I have it where I like it. And then who do you go to? And for me, I ended up going to outside people for the editing. Mm-hmm. 
because I realize that some of the people that are closer to me, that even though they really know how to edit, they will edit with a certain something in mind. You need someone with that disconnect who's not worried about your feelings. Right. Yeah. Who's and I and I, I I want them to care about me, yep. but not be concerned too much about the feelings. <laughs> right. So it's a that's where it's the it's the twixt in between, if you want to call it. But yeah, so that's um, I was I was surprised at the. Uh, um, like I said, this this particular book and then the others both have the friendship, both have things along that line. But this this is one that just came out. There's, um, like I said, the RPG as well, which is a different aspect or a different spreading out. Well, I find it really interesting because the way that you created these stories with your kids yeah. is very much how role playing games work. Yes, you know, and it and there is there's some connection with that because. Um, Back in the day, um, before before when I was built mostly D and D was mostly a West Coast thing. Yeah, um, that there are still people around that are D and D is evil and and things oh, along yeah, that line. Like the satan- where all of a sudden you're going, no, I, 80s, yeah. I find it liberating yeah. for a lot that they can make up a story and and see that four hours later to have somebody all of a sudden, you know remember what you said three hours ago let alone yep. listen to what you're saying now you know that's it's it there is something to it and there's problem solving and teamwork right and and it's and we we get older yeah. but the kid in us is still the kid in us it's there's still and that's why i even though um to many i'm kind of known as a, a, a children's author but it, it's it's really on some of these that even as adults, when you go back, and I'm not comparing myself, but to like Mark Twain or, or Huck Finn or any of these others, that all of a sudden you you say, well, I, I read it when I was 32. It was different from when I was 12. Sure, yeah. And, and the same, it's because you're still that kid that's down in there and that if you want something to kind of get you focused back to your core, this is kind of... Yeah, know, I feel like everyone... Yeah, you, know, you get older, but I feel like you always feel like you're yeah. still like in oh, your yeah. like mid twenties. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, how many times did I get you yeah. tell me like I can do that? Yeah, you're right. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and and some of that, what I've tried to do, and and maybe to my chagrin on some of it, if we're talking the parenting stuff or or actually any of these things, is that if you want to and you think you should, just do it. Yeah. Why do, you know, I had a very strong self-edit Yeah, that you shouldn't be doing this because that's meant for this. That's mm-hmm. this. And those type of feelings you have to get past. And then all of a sudden what I find is on the other side, people all of a sudden say, wow, even like yourself, I'll say, well, I never knew that you did that. And it's like, okay, well, that, yeah, that's a piece of me. Yeah. And that's, and it is from me, but it's not, it's not me yeah you know what i mean it's 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 so it's it's yeah it's it's interesting because it is that like there's people are always like oh you know i i want to try this i want to try that you know i want to write a knot whatever their interest is yep and they are like well it'll never get published yeah but do it you know like who cares if it never gets published right like you do it for you for the enjoyment of doing it and A, you never know. And B, I mean, how many you know manuscripts have people found after someone's passed away and it's become a book? Or yep. you know, even something along the lines of, you know, if your family finds it after you've passed, they may turn into a book for the family. You yes. know? And you just really don't know what will come of it. It also gives insights um, to an internal you that a lot of times that if you're sitting down over Chipotle or whatever, that all of a sudden, sorry, San Diego's, um, but <laughs> La Bamba's the new yeah, place. Oh yeah. That's oh, so okay. good. Okay. <laughs> my- but if you're sitting around on those things that you don't really get into those depths, yeah. you know, because you're either afraid to offend or things along that line. And this is a voice outside of it that allows you to kind of tap in to go, Oh, that he must, because you can't, if you don't believe something in your soul, yep. it does leak through. Mm-hmm. It does come through. 
And that's where that that innocence and the openness and the friendship are important to me. I I, uh, I cherish those. I, I like people that are genuine. <laughs> I, and and even on these, these are it, it comes from a genuine place. Yeah. So it's easy for me to, to go through and talk with somebody about whether it's a story or, or doing anything else because it came from that genuine place. So it, it's, um, it's good for me too because there's a lot of times that people all of a sudden say, well, oh, yeah. And the surprising thing for me, and again, it's just like the individual, the readers, mm -hmm. and the same thing happens with music, and, it ha and I was – lucky enough to be in a bunch of music things in the past. Um, the, um, but people have different translations. So all of a sudden saying, when the part, when they had this, you're going, hmm, that was kind of a transitional part. I wasn't yeah. meaning it as, but to them, it was transformative. Yeah. So that's when all of a sudden you start going, wow. And the same, and I, and I got a kick because, uh, you know, like you said, especially in music stuff and things along that line, which I know, you you have now tapped into the ether of his his We're above uh, and everything. <laughs> I, I know all. Oh, believe me, I know um, that all of a sudden they have one that you know what the heck we'll put Stairway to Heaven on the back of this you know single and it gives it a place. Yeah, and before you know it, that becomes the hit. Yep. This it's like it's it, something it, it's, connected with people. It is that kind of stage of any art is like there's your intent when you create it and then there's how it's observed yes and like um eddie vetter uh famously yep. talked about his song alive which is not supposed to be a happy song yep but the fans interpret it in an entirely different way and now because of that it means something different to him yep. and it's that's like really fascinating almost like the fans interpretation of it became part of the song. Yep. You know? And there was there's a whole that's another story for another day, but with uh, Bruce Springsteen and Reagan uh, back when he was running, he was doing the Born in the USA song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Bruce was saying, "Why are you doing that song? It's depressing. <laughs> it's about the the guttural yeah. part of war." And uh, all of a sudden they said, well, "No, no, it's not. It's Born in the it's like what's so it was the, somebody saw it in a different way, and it yeah. wasn't until all of a sudden they read the lyrics and read, and all of a sudden, wait a minute, yeah, you know, some don't care, some just want the clip, and what, away yeah, it want, goes. Yeah. You know, that's why you'll see it. You know, um, something that was confrontational um, twenty years ago as a rap thing is now on a diaper commercial. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, or or even all of a sudden you go seriously. The exact opposite is. Um, you know, that's always controversial every Christmas is Baby It's Cold Outside. Yes. When the girl says, what's in this drink? People are like, oh, my God, he slipped or something. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, I mean, <laughs> so, no. <laughs> and also, and, and it's similar in some, uh, drawing it a little bit back to the, the stories, the, the children's stories and things along that line, you really have to put yourself in the mindset at that age. Mm -hmm. And that's probably one of the toughest parts yeah, is to have people of that age say that it's genuine. Yeah, that all of a sudden they go, okay, well, I mean, if if I wrote, you know, your biography and mm -hmm. things along that line, I'd, I'd go through and it'd be for somebody else, but kids would go, what the heck, you yeah. know? Um, he that's his path. I have mine. It, they're working on their own struggles, right? You know, and, one and way or another. I was talking about this recently, probably like an episode or two ago. Um, about Goonies yep, and how meaningful Goonies was to me as a kid because I was right around the same age as the actors were. And I'm like, that's how we talked to each other. Like that's, they portrayed that age exactly how that age acts. Yep. And it was so genuine because I feel like, you know, that weird like 12 to 15 age when they try to market to you they treat you like you're 10. Yes. You know? Yeah. And oh, they yeah. just don't get it. And it, it, yep. it's a really hard needle to thread because you don't want to admit that that age knows as much as they know and that they're out there swearing. And, yep. you know. And some of it becomes peculiar. I do um, some volunteering with some seniors. 
And sometimes we'll be sitting down talking with somebody that is 65, mm -hmm. sometimes 105. Yeah. They're coming from complete different places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're at, all of a sudden you're saying, well, you're right next to each other. Yeah, but there's similarities, mm -hmm. but there's... And they in your brain, you're like, they're just old people. They're, and they're, like, yeah, well, and they're, they're so you all of a sudden go, well, yeah, it, yeah. and the, technically a generation is 25 years. Yeah. So you all of a sudden you're saying, okay, and people generally, and the confusing part is, uh, I also I have a marketing book too, but that, that's on Kindle. But the um, one of the things is is that people see themselves as 10 to 15 years younger than what they are. Right. Especially after the age of 40, 45, somewhere in there. You know, when there's enough years yeah. uh, that you can do it. But you generally you see yourself younger. So all of a sudden to see some of these people that are acting like they're so much younger, and then all of a sudden – and the reverse can happen too. You can have – and believe me, I've met, I've met a lot of them uh, with great pleasure uh, – 11-year-olds that you're going, this, this person has an old soul. They're, right, they're, yeah. they're 30 plus. Yeah. And they're they're and in then they this get to tiny little that, package. You're like, are you yeah. old, like? Do you yeah. do you have dinner at four? Like, what, what's going yeah, on? And right and I I get that. Yeah. Um, my oldest was one that you know at the age of whatever the the second he could talk and walk, he would go around and all of a sudden he would he would sit down with all the grown ups. Yeah. And have conversations. Meanwhile, the kids are wrestling and breaking dishes in the other room. Right. 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 And, it, and he was perfectly happy discussing geopolitics or whatever and it's not that that's all adults do but yeah but he had no problem talking that language and because he was always generally that way i won't i won't say always but enough and some of that is to appreciate some of the moments mm -hmm. a lot of times especially in the last couple of years uh with the pandemic and all this other stuff people you have to self-reflect a little bit yeah, and that's what all of a sudden on this, all of a sudden you start realizing I, I just I have to get this out, and they're saying, well, what do you hope from? What do you, what are your aspirations? No, I, I need to get it out. Yeah, yeah. It's similar to uh, a lot of other, and I'm sure you see it all the time. But creative people that just they they, they got to get it out, uh, whether it is that song and now it's on Spotify. Okay, now whatever it does, it does. Yeah, it's out. And, and sometimes like. Uh I love coming up with puns. Um, okay. Puns and dad jokes. Okay. Like, that's my jam. Okay. Yeah. And like, we'll be driving to like an event or something and you know, it'll be like, for some reason we'll be like coming up with dog art puns. Yep. And you're driving and it, the car is quiet and all of a sudden you're like, Oh, I got one. And like every once in a while you'll be like, I, I'm going to say this. I know it's dumb and bad, but I can't not focus on it until yes. I say it. And once you yep. say it, you're like, okay, it's out, it's out in the ether, and yep. my, now my brain can move in a different direction. It's weird. Like, but you'd, you'd be surprised. There was, um, I remember a story about. Um, you remember Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. They're actually from Western Mass. Yep. And they uh, did Eastman it. and Laird. Yeah. Right? yeah. And they did it originally from the stories that I've always kind of known, is that they did some comic books that friends of theirs said, you ought to put this into a comic book, yep. and they did it to keep them quiet and yeah. get it out. And before you know it, they became an international sensation Oh yeah, to the point that, you know, I went to Disneyland, and all of a sudden Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are in concert, and you start going, what the heck is going on yeah. there? Yeah. And, and it's, you, it's and, evolved But, but lot, there's people yeah. that... You know, which, you know, one of the more popular social games is which one of the Ninja Turtles do you most relate to and things along that mm -hmm. line. Okay. I, but that's amazing that those type of things that somebody put it out there and they did it. Um, I'm sure Leonardo was a friend of theirs that did some, but somebody along the line all of a sudden said, I'm just like Leonardo. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Michael Ange Okay. I'm. You know, and that's what that's what's been amazing on some of these type of things is that, and even even the artwork for the cover and things along that line um, that that Zach had done was was one of those that it was an easy transition because he saw almost what I saw. Yeah. So it wasn't a matter of okay, I don't want it to be 
insulting. I don't want it because it came from that because he tapped into when I was there, this is what I saw. Yeah. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's what like I saw like too. Like evolution okay. And there, yeah. there may have been tweaks and things that, okay, I, I see it kind of, but for the most part, it was an easy process. I mean, he's uh, an easy guy to work with anyway, but, but so you never, you never quite know. And the same thing, all of a sudden, oh, this would be a great RPG game, or this would be a great, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't think of it. It's not a matter of, I know that they're out there, yeah. and I know that it's huge, but I also, I didn't think of it that way. But somebody else is, well, I would pick it up, or I, I like that piece that I will spring it this way. Mm -hmm. And if that's what invigorates you, great. You know, if if that's the song that you're singing in the shower, go for it. Yeah. You know, some of my favorite stuff to create is when you do it, you know, uh, collectively in a group. Oh, yeah. You know, I feel like you get, if it's the right group, you can get some of the best work. You know? uh, and you, and writing, writing is an, a bizarre entity <laughs> because you start off in the process where it's just you. Yeah. It is just solely you and as a matter of fact the more people that come in too early all of a sudden can go no wait a minute that's not really what i intended yeah and so you have to get it to the 80 percent 90 percent and then all of a sudden you have to kind of flip that now other people's opinions that are especially within the process librarians or 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 kids or whoever that all of a sudden go no that's not that's not right that all of a sudden you have to learn to take that because if you put your soul down and then somebody says, well, I don't like the part that you go, well, that's my part. That's right. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you're yeah, you're yeah. judging me. Exactly. And, and so you have to kind of, um, so I, I, that process, you have to go through multiple and then even you go through the editing stage and then all of a sudden it's, well, it's too long for this or it's too short for this or all of a sudden you realize on the books there's e easy readers that have to be below a certain number of pages mm -hmm. and then there's novellas and the, it's okay every everything has a label on it yeah you find and all, all of a sudden all, you all go wait a minute yeah. i was just trying to get it down yeah and yes it is true to what what i wanted and things along that line and then so i'm sure similar to musician people that you that talk to that all of a sudden it's you go through this entire process that can take a year or two, and then all of a sudden it's finally done and out. People are judging it and loving it, hopefully, and along that line. And then all of a sudden, so what's next? And yeah. Go, yeah. What do you mean? What? what I just, <laughs> I just, I just gave birth. Yeah. You know, and I'm, and I'm not trying to necessarily. I don't know what that means, even though I'm showing. Um, <laughs> but you know, I it. And especially for musicians now is like the music industry has changed so much and people's attention spans are so short Yes, that like they don't release albums in the same right. way. Right. Now it's like, oh, I'm going to put up a song this month and I'll put right. up one in a month later and a month later to always keep us kind of yep. in the algorithm. You yep. know? Yeah, and, it, and as the music end, I can continue to talk for ever and ever, amen, <laughs> is... is it's interesting to me because um, I, I had enough of the vinyl records the first time around that all of a sudden going, okay, there's a certain dimension. There's a certain, if you listen to Nirvana in vinyl yeah. and you listen to it on digital, they're different experiences for me. For sure, yeah. For a lot of people, it's not. If they don't have it in their earbuds or if they yeah. don't have it compressed so it takes out, to me, those pieces that they took out for the MP3s, all of a sudden, that was half. That's somebody put that in for a reason, right? Yeah, you know. You're so all some of the intent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's a whole weird movement now. Like I was interviewing um, a musician from LA, I'm blanking on his band's name. Um, damn it, I can't remember. I'm sure he was influential in your life, though. Uh, he is actually really he's a good <laughs> dude. Um, but they're like, oh, yeah, you know, our new EP is coming out. It's going to be on everything and, you know, Spotify, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, we'll have it on vinyl and cassette. And I'm like, what? He's like, we'll have it on cassette. I'm like, yeah. why? <laughs> and he's like, 
Oh, it's a new thing. Like, oh yeah, it. yeah. It comes back around. I don't get it though. Like, I I have vinyl. I get because there's a certain yeah cassette. S- cassette. I'm like, you I mean, play it fifty times and then yeah. it eats it. <laughs> if it if it comes back to eight tracks or yeah. something along that line, I may jump off the ship. Right? <laughs> but because all of a sudden you listen to Endegada Davida. Yeah. Click click. <laughs> in the middle of a solo, you're going, "What the heck is going on here?" I yes, yeah. and and. And all power to be with whoever. At least the music is out there. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think creative people as a whole are given enough credit or funding or whatever to keep moving. Yeah. Um, it's tough. You're doing this. You have to do it because of the love of it. Period. Occasionally, yes, somebody springs forth, and uh, Jeff Kinney or the, the the others that are out there with like the Diary of the Wimpy Kid that become an empire. Yeah. But there's literally thousands, if not millions, of other people that are struggling that either didn't have the chance to put it down in writing, go through the process. Yeah. And it's been a learning experience for me all the way through, and it still takes a year, year and a half after saying, this. Is, okay, yes, yeah. this is, I'm going to take this and interpret it into that. And a lot of people all of a sudden, well, that's nice, and what's next? And it's like, well, I... I'm not demeaning the what's next, but can we take a moment? Yeah. Did you, know? you read this? Can yeah, read I just, yeah, I just, <laughs> just, and, yeah. and most of them, it's like, well, you know, nice cover, nice back. And it's like, okay, I, I get it. But there's a certain point where you have to, and one of my mantras in life is generally savor the moment. Yeah. That there is a certain time where you have to just stop and, and smell those roses or whatever. You have to savor that moment because it won't happen again. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's, you know, life is what happens when you're busy making plans. It's, yep. it's that same type of and thing. And it, it's so. one of those, like, I try, I try to do that frequently. And a lot of the times it's when we're doing something weird and I'll just nudge fish. You know, we'll be, uh, we were lucky enough to watch the, the joust from the King's box at King yep. Richard's fair. Yep. And like I nudge fish, I'm like, this is our job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're technically working right now. This is so weird. And those those are those moments that when you go back and even tell other people that all of a sudden, oh, yeah, like for me, I, oh, yeah, I met Bon Jovi on this, and we were supposed to back up them, but they, they all, they, huh, what, what, huh? And those are the, the things that yeah. we throw away that to other people are going, wait a minute, how did you, what? What, what? And the same thing even with this. Going, I didn't realize that you did. Okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. and that's you it know. Always makes for a very interesting barroom conversation. Either someone that I know who kind of follows us a little bit, and I'll sit down, and they'd be like, "You, you interviewed Tiffany?" Yeah, and I'd be like, "Yeah, how?" I'm like. <laughs> I I said, hey, is Tiffany available for? Yes. You know, I'm like, I just asked. Yeah. And, or you meet someone new, and they're like, what do you do for a living? You're like, all right, sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Get yourself and a there drink. Are, it's gonna take there a while. are times, like even with the writing, that all of a sudden they'll sit down and they'll they'll say, oh, what do you do? And I say, well, you know, uh, children's books and things along that line, as well as, and I'll continue other things that go on and high tech stuff and things. But all of a sudden they'll go, oh, you write, you write too? Oh. And then all of a sudden you go, and internally, your internal little kid yeah. is going, why is this real author? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. is this? And it's like, okay, they wrote Moby Dick, and yeah. I wrote, and it's like, well, mm. so, and then you realize to them, they heard, they're hearing the same thing yeah. that inside them that, okay, I did half the book on tying knots and half on, on the whale. Yeah. So it's, oh, who's going to read it? And then you realize that all of a sudden it lives on. And to me, there's something about, I mean, I get the digital, and I believe me, I'm, I live in that world as well. But there is something to, and it's nice to see analog records coming back, mm-hmm. uh, physical books yeah. that the kids can go back on to. How many, I, just, I just bumped into somebody recently that is not a young kid, but has read the uh, dream butterflies four or five times and all of a sudden going seriously (laughs) and and looking at them all of a sudden going okay i don't that's not necessarily what i was going but oh and and they got something out of it yeah and that's and those type of things are are cool that if you can get those little glimpses 
that's cool as well. So, yeah. but yeah, savor, savoring the moment is tougher tougher to do. It's easy to say, but it's tough to do. So, so Paul, what's next? <laughs> oh, great. Um, no, uh, I'll where, be taking over uh, uh, an Ebri no, art no, post post. But no, okay, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 later. no, no, it's charge. yours. No, you're you got it. Lock up when you leave. <laughs> yeah, I know. Tip the wastresses. Um, I don't know. I I mean, there's a lot of stories that I have um, that'll probably happen. But the reality is, is like I said, this it's you know it's. Um, and I don't mean to demean this one way or another, but it's, it's like having a kid, and then all of a sudden somebody says, you know, so you're going to have another one? Yeah. And you go, seriously? Or, or like you just get married. I just, like, so when are you going to have kids? Yeah. You're like, can I enjoy being married first? <laughs> just <laughs> give me a week. Yeah. You yeah. know, just in, in that type of – so there is – Let I'm, me screw up this one I'm, first. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to save her. Yeah. Uh, yes, there are things that are in the works and things along that line, but for the most part – I also want to give it enough of its own fuel to have it set that, I mean, all of a sudden it's not a, you know, I'll just wait for your next one. Yeah. It's like um, each one is an entity unto itself and, and um, it's, it is peculiar as well because for me, it was a year and a half or so ago that all of a sudden I started the process. So all of a sudden now to go back and people say, well, on page whatever, it says, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I had my business hat on for a little while yeah. so I could make sure that the thing got out and RPG and, and you know, de decisions and details and things along that line. And all of a sudden now, all of a sudden you're going back into the heart of it. I That was the original goal, but let me get there yeah otherwise i'm going to get the mental bends from going too fast from one yeah. to the next y you have to you know but uh, not all of us are as courageous or intellectual as you so i'm not you know <laughs> listen but flattery, it's, it's, I think flattery it's, will totally get you back on the podcast no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's the wizard beard yeah. beard um yeah, but no. where can people go to find the book uh amazon and uh barnes and noble they can get both of the books and they can get things along that line. Eventually, there is a dreambutterflies.com that you can get. You can actually uh, um, get a um, princess certificate that you can write in a name oh. and things along that yeah. line. Um, eventually, one of the things that will happen is is that there'll be pmkellybooks.com. And yeah. then there'll be more of these things that'll come into it. Um, so yeah, they can get it, and then um, like I said, Stillwater done and uh, uh, books done in uh, Pawtucket. Um, there are other places like the Butterfly Book is at the Butterfly House down in Cape Cod. Oh, cool! Um, things along that line yeah. that people have certain affinities. Again, if they just pick it up and then all of a sudden they go, "Oh, this is actually substantive. <laughs> yeah. there's actually something and, to it." Uh, the RPG is uh, that's uh, Drive Through and a couple of the others. There's this I think it's, it's Drive Through RPG dot com and some of the others. Yeah, people that you get can RPGs, you can, you can you can get it and. Yeah. You can either get it in a hard copy, like I, like I said, I'm, I'm tantalizing because I just I only have the one yeah. that are here that that is here. But you can also get the digital version. You can get all of that as well, and that's with uh, um, him. That he's I mean he's Richard Richard Kelly. Richard Kelly. Yeah. He's he's dynamite at these, and um, I I bow to his wisdom when it comes to yeah, one of these things. Serves, and I know we he had was on him this. on, and he had created. A fishing yes, RPG, yes. and I was like, "That's so weird." But let's talk about yeah. that. Yeah, and he and and he is yeah. he continues to grow and evolve and and more and more and and you never know because um, my brother um, was over in Japan mm -hmm. and at a little store. And just for curiosity, wanted to see what other type of RPGs and yep. other fantasy things might be out there. And all of a sudden, they one of the Japanese gentlemen that was helping, all of a sudden came up and said, you're the dad of the one that made, and before you know it, they're all coming out of the woodwork, <laughs> all saying, oh, well, what yeah. about this, and how is he going to do one... He's going. I don't. I okay. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> and so you never know where you touch. Yeah, um, and that's that's what's I think cool about any of these. And I don't know what 
I'm trying to live in the moment. I'm trying to, that all of a sudden, if the RPG thing continues to go in a particular direction, then yeah, I'll go that way. Yeah, you got to kind of um, go where it takes you. The, and the same thing even with this. And like I said, it's it's good to have some of the books back and yeah. um, some of the, I mean, the physical, the pages. There are also, you know, Digital things versions, on Kindle yeah. and things along that line that you can get. I don't know what the latest is on it, but it, it, I know for Kindle it was a way to be able to get the marketing stuff out mm -hmm. but um thank you so much for yeah man you know time. whatever whatever i don't know how long or nothing's been thrown at me yet so no, it's, I, it's I'm, about an I'm hour good okay it's about, about right about where we should be. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> just like we timed it. yeah just like um, you know yeah, yeah. It's, it's taking some practice I, i've gotten better at this okay yeah. <laughs> no you are you're great it's it's just not and, a problem uh, yeah so I, I i wish you the best of success well thank you anytime thank you, you thank have something you, thank to promote, you. please Oh well, I, I like I said, I, I I know I know you from the uh, the drawing and the, some of the other activities of the uh, the tentacles of the, your your brand yeah. that you have uh, one way or another around. Um, so we bump into each other, but I also don't want to impose. So it's kind of oh, it's never imposed. You know, I I, I got, you never know. We'll, we'll talk somebody. as soon as we stop recording because I have something yeah. else in, in mind for you too. Okay. Um, but okay. for our listeners. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and uh, make sure you check out Smidgens, and we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. And thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns, or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.